say when your application program is going to work with uh, some data in the database what it's going to do is it's going to enforce this whatever data is there in your hard disk will be moved to a buffer on the main memory so the entire block will be moved to the buffer so any changes we do as part of transaction processing will be working on the buffer so please keep that in mind because we can't directly go and work on the hard disk if you want to change the data on the hard disk it should be moved to your main memory and all the processing happens only in the main memory so never forget that we went through a lot of steps for this to make you understand what do you mean by writing a value to the uh, database it means writing to the buffer changing in the buffer only when you commit changes are permanent in the hard disk we have seen all these problems with respect to concurrent execution of transactions right what are those three problems lost update temporary update and incorrect summary so when you want to run transactions concurrently in a commercial database you are going to use some techniques those techniques are called concurrency control techniques and in commercial databases they use locking protocols so we have to understand the concept of database locks before going into any of the locking protocols so what are the different kinds of locks we have studied we studied two types of locks read lock and write lock right what do you mean by read locking an item when your uh, transaction is just going to read the item from the database so it's going to be a read lock on the item so it's going to issue a read lock and then it's going to read the data from the buffer so read lock is a shared lock in the sense simultaneously multiple transactions which are just going to only read the data item will enforce a read lock before reading the data item so read lock is a shared lock please understand that what is a write lock if i am going to go and update a value change a value do something to the values or uh, to the data in my database i am going to go with a write lock write lock is an exclusive lock if one transaction issues a write lock no other transaction can even read the item from the particular space so what is a write lock is an exclusive lock say if transaction t1 wants to update the balance then it will enforce a write lock and then it will start performing the process so once when it is updating some other transaction wants to just read that item that will not be allowed if there is another transaction which wants a write lock on the item again it will not be allowed so until transaction t1 finishes and unlocks that item the other transaction should wait so that is the concept between locking so you have seen two types of locks read locks and write locks there is one more thing that we have to understand unlocking an item say after transaction t1 finishes its work with account a it should unlock the item so that other transactions that are waiting can acquire the locks on the item a locks can be at various levels it can be on a particular field in your table it can be on the entire record it can be on the entire table too so there are uh, different uh, variations with respect to locks in our discussion we'll be focusing on locking one particular field in a database so what i am going to do now is we are going to again go through the lost update problem and we'll see how our locks prevent this lost update problem. So what is this lost update problem? Say we have two transactions T1 and T2 running concurrently, and this is uh, this column denotes the timestamp at which the instructions in these transactions execute. And I have taken a sample uh, table containing the balances of three people. Say person A, person B, and person C. the balance of person a is 500 rupees person b is 100 rupees and person c is 1000 rupees now there are going to be two transactions here transaction 1 that is t1 what it's going to do is it's going to transfer 100 rupees from account a to account b that is transaction t1 this is going to perform that parallelly another transaction what it's going to do is this is going to transfer 50 rupees from account a to account c that is transaction t2 two transactions running concurrently we will see 
whether we are getting the correct results after running the transactions like this. So when you talk about consistency, what is the total amount in all the three accounts before the start of these two transactions? 1600, it's 500 plus 100 plus 1000. So total amount is 1600. Now we will start the transactions. So begin transaction. So this transaction reads balance of A. What is balance of A? It is 500. Say when it is reading balance of A, it's reading it from the buffer in the main memory. So this is actually present in the buffer in the main memory. So it is 500. And uh, it is performing 500 minus 100 that is 400. Simultaneously this transaction also kicks in. It also reads balance of A. From where it is going to read? From the buffer in the main memory. So since this particular data is already in the buffer, it is going to read it from the buffer. So what is the value that is going to read? 500. And this guy writes balance of A. It means he should go and change the value in the buffer. So he change it to 400. That is what is going to be written. 400 will be written. And uh, we will switch transactions now. Compute balance of A minus 50. He has already read 500. So what is 500 minus 50? 450. He is computing that. This guy P1 reads balance of B from the buffer. So what is balance of B? 100. And this guy writes balance of A, he has already computed it as 450, so he is going to go and update the buffer as 450. Now this guy computes balance of B plus 100, already he has read it B as 100, so B plus 100 will be 200. And uh, he is going to write the balance to the buffer, so it will be written as 200. Now he reads balance of C. What is balance of C? 1000. So he reads 1000. This guy computes balance of C plus 50 that is nothing but 1050 and he commits. Commits in the sense it is permanent now. All that changes are permanent. You can think of that to be flushing the data from the buffer to your hard disk. And uh, this guy writes balance of C. What is the balance of C? 1050. And uh, he commits. So now the uh, question is after our entire process is done, we have finished running these two transactions, what is the total amount in left in all the accounts? It's 450 plus 200 plus 1050 that is 1700. According to the rule of consistency we said before the start of the transaction, the total amount should be equal to uh, the total amount after the transaction is complete. So here we have a variation of 100 rupees. Why it happened? Because you know you, this transaction made this update, right? Before this transaction could write this update in the buffer, this guy, the second transaction went and read the value from the buffer. So this update was lost. That's why you say it's a lost update problem. The changes made by one of the transactions was lost while we are running these two things parallelly. So how to fix this? We have talked about locking protocols and uh, I mean we have talked about the locks not the protocols. right? So how will we fix this? We will go to locks. We can use locks to prevent this. Very simple. So let me tell you how locks help you in preventing the lost update problem. So again the same thing, the same process we have to repeat. So this transaction starts and what transaction T1 does, it is going to transfer 100 rupees from account A to account B. This is transaction T1. So when it is transferring, definitely it is going to change A and B. So when it is changing something, what kind of lock it should issue? It should issue only write locks because it is going to update the values. So in that case, first it is going to issue a write lock on A. Since no one else has acquired a write lock, write lock is achieved and then it reads balance of A that is 500. The second transaction also starts here. Say what is the second transaction actually? Second transaction is nothing but it is going to transfer 50 rupees from A to C. So to transfer 50 rupees from A to C, the transaction T2 will also change the values of A and C. 
So he wants to change the value of a. So what he requests? Write log. But when he requests the write log, what you see here is t1 has already got the log. So obviously this guy will not be given a log because only one transaction can hold on to a write log. So transaction t2 should wait because this guy has logged it, transaction t2 will be waiting. Say he is waiting now. So meanwhile this guy computes balance 500 minus 100, 400. Write balance of A that is 400, he is going to update it in the buffer. Once when he has done with this, uh, uh, no, his activities with respect to balance of A, what it is going to do? Unlock A. So once when he unlocks A, the lock is dropped. So the transaction who is waiting for the lock will go and acquire that lock. So now E transaction T2 gets the write lock and E starts it. So what is the value you will read from the buffer? E is going to read 400. And uh, so E is reading balance 400 whereas this guy now wants to change B. So write lock of B will be achieved and E will do read balance of B that is 100. What is B plus 100? 200. Whereas here this guy is computing A minus 50. What is the value of A? He has read already. 400, 400 minus 50 is 350 and write balance of A will be, you will be writing 350 and then once he has done with his operations on the item A, he is going to unlock A, release the lock. So he will release the lock and then the transaction continues, write balance of B, what is the balance of B we are going to write to the buffer? It's 200. Actually, this value was changed to 350 in our previous slide. So, I will make it 350 here. And unlock B. After working with B, I will unlock it. You write lock C. What is write locking C? T1, uh, T2 write lock C. Reads balance of C as 1000. What is 1000 plus 50? 1050. Writes balance of C to the buffer. So, it is 1050 here. And he unlocks C. He is also done with this. So, he will unlock it and even both the transactions commit. Now when you go and find the sum of all the uh, you know accounts, what are the balances, what is the sum of balance of all the accounts, so what is that, it is coming to 1600. So that is how you prevent this uh, loss update problem using the concept of logs.